after you have deployed your models into production, you have taken your data set, trained it on acts like doing detections, could be segmentation, post estimation, update detection, and so on, then we need to maintain our computer vision models. So this is pretty much the whole pipeline. Once you train the models, we deploy them, but another very important step, and a lot of people are actually like just disregarding this. They're not thinking that this is actually like an important step, and that is maintaining and also monitoring the models after we have deployed them into production. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video here. We're going to talk about a few different tools. We have some open source frameworks and so on that we often use to go in and do model monitoring, because over time, even after we've trained a model on a specific data set, it can act like drift over time. Could be that the model environment is changing, could be that the data, we have data shift and so on. So we might have trained our model on separate data because our environment is pretty much always changing when we have a real world AI application and computer vision model running. So this acts like a very important step, if not the most important step, when we actually take our computer vision models and want to apply them on business use cases. If you don't take this into account, if you don't think this is an important step, you're going to run into a lot of problems, errors, and again, your customers will not be satisfied with the results, or if you deploy and train your own models, you will basically just lose accuracy. It's hard to keep track of, okay, how good is the accuracy of a model? How does it perform over time and so on? And those are very important metrics that we want to track. So in this video here, we're also going to talk about model maintenance, different steps that we can go in and do, how we can set up the whole pipeline with the different tools and so on. We have some very good frameworks that you pretty much use in every situation and every case, and you can just directly use them out of the box, connect them in your pipeline. We're gonna talk about some key elements, basically just the different steps, model drift, data drift, we can even have data shift as well and so on. So when we're talking about model monitoring, the best practice is basically just we want to track the performance re regularly. We want to make sure that our models is actually like keeping the same performance as we got when we did our test and also validation. We have tons of videos covering all the different other aspects in a computer vision pipeline and how to build computer vision systems, both from taking your data set, how you can label it, train it and so on with autolytics, train the models, put them out there, do model optimizations before you put them into deployment. So we have the whole cycle here, but this is very important that we do our money monitoring and also maintenance, good setup, retraining pipelines and so on. That's also very common. So we have our monitoring, we check for our performance, we track that over time, we double check the data quality. So if you're getting some errors, you might get some data shifts, some inaccuracies and so on. Make sure that you double check your data. Could also be like diverse data sources. When you deploy it, you maybe train it on a few cameras, a few environments and so on. Then you put it out in the real world and your model performs very different compared to what you saw inside your Jupyter notebook and so on. So that's also very important. Could, for example, be like, let's say that we have a self-driving car. If you only train from data from Tesla cars, we can't just take an arbitrary camera, like arbitrary cameras, put it into any other vehicle, and then the car will just drive itself in that situation either. But if we take five, six, seven different car types and so on, and start to build a large scale data set, it will start to generalize better. So use diverse data sources as well, combine different monitoring techniques. We're going to go over a few examples in just a second. Monitor the inputs and also the outputs. Are they consistent over time? You can go in and do some double checks, basically just run that through your model because your model could also change over time, which cause these inaccuracies, but also just shift in your performance. If any of these things here occur, make sure you set up alerts so you get an alert. If there's any errors, if there's any data shift and so on, if the inputs and outputs are not correct any longer, could be a ton of different things, but again, make sure that you monitor it, set up alerts and so on. You can do retraining of the models, sample some data when you have it running out there in the real life world, sample it, retrain it, and then we have the whole computer vision pipeline. So the most used tools for computer vision and also basically just AI model monitoring in general is Prometheus. It's basically like an open source monitoring cool tool that basically just collect and also stores the metrics for our performance. So all the different metrics that we have for our model could be accuracy, precision, and so on. We can have Prometheus store that, but also just collect it from our pipeline. Then we can have Grafana and they're going hand in hand. They works very nicely together. We also have another tool in just a second. I'm going to pull up a visualization here, but this act like looks very awesome. Grafana is just the dashboard, which is actually like building on top of Prometheus. So just connect to the data source where it goes in, pulls the data and shows it in different dashboards. You can have custom dashboards. You can specify what metrics, what, what different stuff that you want to actually like have in your dashboards and also want to track 
and monitor for your model, but also data. Then we also have another one here, which is called Evidently AI. All these tools here, they're open source, but this one here is designed for monitoring, but also like debugging machine learning models, especially in production. So this framework here can actually go in and detect data drift. If you have that in your data over time, model performance degradation it is not performing as good as before, but also just other issues because again, we have all the data collected with Grafana. We have our dashboards. We can connect it with Evidently, which is basically just checking for anomalies, detecting if there's a data drift or exactly like the model's performance that is degrading over time. So we basically just have this whole architecture here for monitoring so we have our machine learning service where we're running our prediction and also doing our inference with our model then we throw that into evidently which is just doing this monitoring service that we can act like just pull the metrics from prometheus as well that stores and collect all the data that we have and then we can just connect grafana on top of that to pull our data and show it out in visualizations dashboards and just graphs in general so these are pretty three pretty cool frameworks that you can combine for maintaining your computer vision model but also just AI models in general. Monitoring, maintaining, retraining, all of these works here that are very important when we are talking about taking our computer vision models from our Jupyter Notebook, from our Google Colab, and act like putting them out there in the real world. So it's now going to take a look at an example of data drift detection. So it could be that your environment is changing over time, could be lighting conditions and so on, could also just be whatever different factor that has an effect on your data, your input data. When we're talking about cameras, could be lighting, could be reflection and so on, could be that is changing over time, indoor environment, outdoor environment, different weather conditions and so on. So that could be different types of data drift. So we basically just want to have our data drift detection. Could be that we want to detect outliers with outside a specific region and so on. This graph here shows it pretty good. So we can both detect outliers, but we can also have this data drift that could happen and the data drift could happen sometimes but it could also just be over time that is totally changing so it's very important that we go in and do continuous monitoring statistical techniques basically just apply all these statistical methods on top of your data to make sure that you act like just detect if there's any shift there's tons of different methods out there we have, again we have this doc page here where you can go way more into details about it could also be there's feature drift in general so when we want to do model maintenance it's very important we have regular updates we can't do model maintenance if we don't have model monitoring we actually like need to know that our model is performing worse could also be that we already know that our model is probably not the best so we want to collect more images once we deploy it into production and then retrain our models but here we can see a very nice accuracy graph of the model so we can see the model accuracy it is basically just degrading over time where if we regularly update the model if we keep retraining it and also adding more and more data to our model we can actually keep our model accuracy at a higher rate over a longer period of time so this is also very important to do and then again then you're going to apply different methods and so on where we can go and use all our monitoring tools to go in and figure out when do we want to retrain we could trigger it like periodically regularly at any interval that we want but again we can also go and use these monitoring tools to go and see when it's actually like necessary to retrain could be that it's not necessary to retrain if you have like a very fixed environment that you can train directly on then you might not need retraining but again it's still very important to monitor it and keep track of these metrics so definitely make sure that you take all these things here into account for building like full scale computer vision systems. It's very important. Like sometimes people just see the good accuracy in the Google Colab notebook. When we're doing our valuation, high parameter tuning, all that, we get good values. We have high precision, high recall, good mean average precision and so on. And we basically just think our model is the best. Over time, we then put it into production. We see totally different results. Could also be that you put it into production, you see good results. But again, if you don't apply monitoring, it can act like degrade over time and most likely will. This is very important. Make sure that you understand each of these steps. Also check out the other videos that we have on the channel. We cover every single part element in the computer vision pipeline, going from data to act like solving use cases out in the real world. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.